They are considered to be gigantic gravity monsters that consume everything that crosses their path, black holes. According to some models, the most massive formations of the cosmos will play a leading role at the end of the universe, namely, when they have consumed even the last star, then evaporate and finally turn the universe into an infinite void. In view of these characteristics and predictions, an exciting question seems all the more intriguing. Could black holes possibly also create new universes? In today's video, we'll take a closer look at what the experts have to say about this intriguing hypothesis. Excited about the unique discoveries and processes in the universe? Then remember to subscribe to Simply Space and click on the bell to receive regular updates on these exciting topics. By giving us a thumbs up, you're showing us that we can keep you engaged with the content of our videos. Do black holes create universes? For quite some time now, experts have been confronted with a question that is as exciting as it is unsolved. How is it actually that the forces and energies that make the permanent existence of the universe possible in the first place are so perfectly coordinated? One thing is certain, if the fundamental constants of the cosmos were changed too much, there would be neither stars nor galaxies in our galactic home, and certainly no life. And exactly this is also an essential core of the so-called anthropic principle. According to this, the the observable universe is observable only because it has all the properties that make life possible for the observer. In other words, if the cosmos were not suitable for the development of conscious life, there would also be nobody there who could observe and describe the universe. However, the anthropic principle meets with approval among experts. The conceivably exciting alternative, which we would like to deal with today, presupposes two basic assumptions. First, our universe, which is only one of many, has formed inside a black hole. And second, Secondly, universes are capable of constantly evolving. A look at the perfectly interlocking parameters of the cosmos makes us suspect that our galactic home seems to be practically constructed. Accordingly, the favorable conditions we find on our Earth awaken us in the assumption that the circumstances prevailing on Earth are directed towards a specific goal, the development of life. Those who share this train of thought justify the apparently non-random nature of the universe with a superior force, such as that of a divine creator. Science, however, has a somewhat different answer for this exciting topic, and that is life itself. According to the theory of evolution, living beings have adapted perfectly to the conditions of our blue home planet over millions of years, and not vice versa. Inspired by the mechanism of this biological natural selection, the US physicist Lee Smolin put forward a theory that was to become known as cosmological inheritance. The core of this unique thesis can be summarized as follows. Massive black holes in a universe give rise to new baby universes that can adapt the fundamental properties of their mother cosmos. In this way, therefore, a cosmological evolution sets in. Within this natural astronomical selection, successful universes prevail over others in the long run. The term of success refers in Smolin's explanations to the longevity of a universe and thus also to the potential to form as many massive black holes as possible. The Cosmological Heredity Just as in the case of biological inheritance, cosmological offspring do not represent perfect copies of their parent universes. Thus, during the formation of new daughter universes, there are always slight changes in the fundamental constants that happen to differ from those of the mother universes. In other words, cosmological mutations occur regularly. Some of these changes favor the ability of a universe to form new black holes. Consequently, those universes also have an important advantage when it comes to spreading their own cosmic genetics. As a result of these processes, in the long run, the totality of successful universes become better and better at forming black holes and keeping their own lineage viable, just as biological organisms become better at spreading and persisting through helpful mutations. As chance would have it, a central connection exists between the formation of many black holes and the formation of life. Both require stars. Therefore, the universe that is better at producing stars is also better at creating planetary systems and ultimately paving the way for life. As breathtaking as Smolin's theories may seem, they must nevertheless be put to the scientific test. But does the corresponding theory seem at all plausible? 
From a scientific point of view, the fundamental core of this conjecture is also by far its most speculative part. Black holes must be able to create universes. The problem, whether the gravity monsters actually possess these creative properties, is completely unknown. The corresponding idea, which Lee Smallen took over within his explanations, came again from his mentor, Bryce DeWitt. The latter put forward the thesis that the mass of a collapsing black hole does not disappear completely in its central, infinite singularity. In truth, it should practically bounce off. However, since the corresponding mass cannot pass the event horizon of the black hole from the inside to the outside, it forms a completely new region of space-time, thus finally creating a new universe. The basic thesis of these propagating black holes was taken up and extended by John Archibald Wheeler. Thus, the U.S. physicist suggested that the fundamental constants of these daughter universes might differ from those of their mothers. This was again the point where Smallen started within his work. He devoted himself to the question, what would happen if just those constants were not reconfigured randomly during the reproduction of universes, but were subject only to slight changes, comparable with the genetic mutations which are known to us from the world of biological evolution. However, since the theses of Smallen and his colleagues cannot be verified beyond doubt, let alone confirmed, even the US American himself readily admitted that there was no scientific reason to take the mechanism of reproducing universes for granted. Therefore, this point is primarily about the question, what would happen if the corresponding theory were true? What would be the corresponding consequences, and how could we test them? The Origin of Black Holes the nature of the fundamental assumption described provides that the totality of all universes is relatively quickly dominated by those galactic worlds that are particularly good at forming massive black holes. Therefore, the conclusion is, the fundamental constants that favor the formation of black holes should be optimal for a successful universe. Fundamentally, central differences also exist in the black hole squadron alongside its various formation mechanisms. The easiest to understand are the background mechanisms mechanisms of stellar black holes. These are formed in the course of a supernova. While the dying star of a certain size sheds its outer shells, its core collapses into an extremely compact structure due to its gravitational pressure. Consequently, one could assume that our universe is optimized to produce as many massive stars as possible. But is this true? In fact, there seems to be a certain fine-tuning in the cosmos. Stars are formed when gigantic gas clouds collapse under their own gravity. For this to occur, however, the corresponding gas must cool to a few degrees above absolute zero. And indeed, the corresponding galactic coolants are given in the form of carbon, oxygen, water, and other chemical elements without which far fewer stars and consequently fewer black holes would be formed. But what is the situation in those cases of black holes which are formed in a different way? In this regard, it is worthwhile to take a look at the exciting statements of cosmologist Alexander Vilenkin, the expert state that quantum fluctuations in the distant future will cause black holes to form spontaneously. Thus, assuming an infinite time span, one day, more of these compact entities will emerge than stars. Here, the more space there is, the greater the chances of the corresponding quantum fluctuations favoring the formation of the spontaneous black holes. In sum, although cosmological selection seems highly speculative, Smallen claims that there should be a concrete verification method for the corresponding assumption. If the hypothesis does indeed reflect reality, the fundamental parameters favoring the formation of black holes would have to be optimized independently of those favoring the evolution of life. In summary, Smallen concluded that a value existed that defined the boundary between neutron stars and black holes to maximize the number of black holes in a successful universe. Specifically, Smallen set this limit at about twice the mass of the Sun. Thus, should our universe be optimized for black hole production, it should not contain neutron stars that exceed two solar masses. But in fact, a neutron star has recently been identified that has 2.17 solar masses. Whether the additional 0.17 solar masses fall into the category of tolerance, or finally falsify the theory established by Lee Smolin, will certainly become the subject of many future debates. Now it's your turn. What are your thoughts on the exciting theory that black holes can create new universes? We're already looking forward to your comments. Finally, take a look at the other interesting videos on our channel, which you can access by clicking on one of the thumbnails in the credits. Thanks for your interest, take care, and we'll see you next time.